Can we have Leon come and speak to us too, in a sense, briefly setting up the scene yeah. for this evening? But I would just want to say it's been an absolute joy for me over the years to get to know Leon over the last number of years. And Leon is a good friend, and all the guys at Life Century do some brilliant stuff over there in Hales Owen. And, uh, and in amongst all that they do, reaching so many people for Christ, it's also for me personally been a joy to kind of get to know Leon and to learn from you and to kind of have you input into my life in lots of different ways. And so we're in for a treat over this weekend. Uh, thank you for your church to release you for this weekend. Uh, I know they're in safe hands as well, but it's been, it's been a joy kind of partnering with you in various different ways over the years. But shall we give Leon a massive round of applause and let us pray for him. Thank you for that. Let me pray for Leon. Father, we thank you for the gift that Leon is to so many people, both in this country and elsewhere, to be with God. Lord, as he steps into our church family, I pray that you'd give him your words to say to us. We're eager, we're open to you, Lord. Speak these words and let the kind Holy Spirit in us just speak to you as we listen to you this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks so much. Um, all that Tim said, um, I would say back to him as well. Um, he's a really, really good friend. And so I feel like I kind of know you guys, even though I don't, uh, just because of our friendship and relationship. And I know several of the other team as well. And we just took the road in Hal Zoe. We're not far away and we are cheering you guys on. We're all in the same team, aren't we? Aren't we? We're all in the same team. And so I'm really cheering you guys on. Just want to kind of set up the theme a little bit. I have promised the wonderful lady here who's doing all that she's doing and an amazing job she's doing too. She's incredible. You have to keep doing that. <laughs> but I will, I will try and be a little slow. She says, I've watched you and you speak really fast. So I will try to be slow. But I want to tell you a little story. So how many of you hated PE at school? Anyone like me? I hated PE at school. So I was football, but rugby was the one game that for me as a kid, I hate. Any rugby fans here tonight? Okay, I, say, I get it. But like, I'm a musician by background. I, I, I say I'm a little bit more of a lover than a fighter. And the whole idea of rugby and tearing bits out of each other. And then one day, we were at like in this kind of inter-house rugby match, the green house versus the blue house. And it was all right because there's no way they were going to choose me for the rugby team. So the both sets of lads, are, the brutes as I call them, were all ready for rugby. And I was sat on the grass. And then the PE teacher said, Evans, we're one short, get change, you're on. Oh, no. So I get on, onto the pitch. And then on the opposite side was this great big guy called Nathan Orme, who hated me for some reason. He's, I say his name was Nathan Orme. He was more like an orc than an orm, if you've seen Lord of the Rings, okay? He had like talons coming out of his fingers. And he just said to me, Evans, if you get the ball, I'm going to kill you. So I thought to myself, here's what I'm going to do. Don't get the ball, okay? <laughs> just don't get the ball. And for 75 of the 80 minutes, I stay away from the ball. And then a few minutes before the end, and the match is tied, this amazing, crazy thing happens that somebody throws me the ball and I catch it. What an idiot. So the minute I caught it, I had an option. I had a choice. What am I going to do with the ball? What are you going to do when the ball comes to you? See, what I could have done is I could have just dropped it. I could have kicked it away. I could have put it up my jumper and pretended it wasn't there. But do you know what I did with it? Do you know what I did with it? So I ran with the ball. I ran really fast. <laughs> really, really fast. And Nathan Orme, he's saying, you got the ball. And he's steaming and there's smoke coming out of his nostrils and his talons are clawing down my back. And he says, I'm going to kill you. I'm going to kill you. I ran so fast. I ran past the post and kept on running. <laughs> and the Peter says, Evans, put the ball down. I put the ball down and we won by a single point. <laughs> you see, here's the thing. Jesus has given us a ball to run with. And you and I know that sometimes it's really hard to run with the ball, right? And I don't know about you, I've been a Christian a long time now, like 40 odd years. This last three years has been brutal, hasn't it? My mother died um, on March the 1st, 2020. The funeral was three days before lockdown. Buried my mom, she was a member of our church, went into lockdown. Our first granddaughter was born a week after lockdown. They're in our church, they live in the next street. We didn't see her for three months. That whole of that first six months was brutal. 
people that we lost through lockdown, the whole confusion, the whole kind of what is church, what is life, you know, what are we doing with it? I don't know about you, but for me, it still kind of feels like we're coming out of that season, but it did something to each and every one of us, didn't it? It did something to us. And what I want to talk about over the next kind of, uh, couple of days with you guys is I want to talk literally about one verse from the Bible. And it's this verse in Judges chapter 8, verse 4. And it's very simple. It's Gideon and his 300 men, exhausted, yet keeping up the pursuit, came to the Jordan and crossed it. And I want to break this verse down. And I know that it's set in a context, so I don't want to be too, you know, kind of with the Bible. But I want to draw out some things. Because I think there are a couple of words that shoot out of this verse to me. And one is the word exhausted. I don't know about you, but I've felt exhausted the last three years, haven't you? Maybe you come to this weekend and you also feel exhausted. This great story I heard years ago, some of you have heard it, said this in a newspaper. Chippy the Budgie didn't see it coming. And, and the, new, the newspaper, the, the, the person that wrote it, she went to the house of the, the owner of Chippy the Budgie. She said, what happened with Chippy the Budgie? And what happened with Chippy the Budgie was this. She said, well, I was cleaning out Chippy's cage with the vacuum cleaner and the phone went and I turned round and whoosh, Chippy was gone. So I switched the vacuum cleaner off and I opened the vacuum cleaner up and there was Chippy. He was alive, but he was dazed and stunned and covered in, in, in ash, and covered in soot and in rubbish. And so I grabbed him and I ran into the bathroom and I thrust him under the tap and I put the tap on, but it was the cold tap and he was boosh. So then I ran into the bedroom and I got the hairdryer and I put the hairdryer on him and blasted him. And now look at him. <laughs> And the, and the newspaper said, Chippy doesn't sing anymore. <laughs> He'd been sucked in, washed out, and blown over. <laughs> Anyone feel like that? <clears throat> Exhausted, yet keeping up the pursuit. Keep running with the ball. And, and I'm going to draw on, on the verse that you know really well from Philippians chapter 3, where Paul says, one thing I do is forgetting what is behind, I press on to take hold of that for which Christ Jesus has taken hold of me. Listen to it from the Passion Translation. I admit that I haven't yet acquired the absolute fullness that I am pursuing, but I run with passion into his abundance so that I may reach the purpose for which Christ Jesus laid hold of me to make me his own. I don't depend on my own strength to accomplish this. However, I do have one compelling focus. I forget all of the past as I fasten my heart to the future instead. I run straight for the divine invitation of reaching the heavenly goal and gaining the victory prize through the anointing of Jesus. What are you going to do when the ball comes to you? I am so glad that you're doing those seminars in the morning, that Nick is doing that one and back, it's not just a cruise. Because this isn't an age thing. Every single one of us can run with the ball that Jesus has given us. Even though we're exhausted, we can keep pursuing that which Jesus is wanting for our lives. One of my favourite little stories is a guy called E. Stanley Jones, who was a Methodist missionary to India for 50 years. He met presidents, he met kings, he spoke to thousands and thousands of people. And at the age of 80, or in his early 80s, he had a stroke. It so debilitated him that he couldn't speak. But what he did is he wrote a book. He muttered a manuscript to somebody who wrote a book. And in this book is one of my all-time favourite little paragraphs. And he says this in the book, There are scars on my faith. But underneath those scars, there are no doubts. Christ has with me the consent of all my being and with the cooperation of all my life. Listen to this. The song that I sing, he's 83 at this point. The song I sing is a lit song. Not the temporary exuberance of youth that often fades when middle and old age sets in with their disillusionment and cynicism. No, I am 83. And I'm more excited about being a Christian than I was at 18 when I first put my foot on the way. I want to be like that, don't you? Amen. I want to be that kind of older person that is still running, that is still keeping up the pursuit. And what I want to do tomorrow and Sunday is give you three things that I think are going to help us keep up the pursuit, even, even when we're exhausted.
you traveled a long way. Let me pray for you. Let me pray. Father, I want to thank you for this amazing opportunity that we get this weekend to hang out together, to be church, to be family together. God, the principle, one of your principles, that when there's space created, you fill it. And Lord, I invite you and we invite you over this weekend to fill this space with your presence. Lord, I pray that you would come and visit every single one of us. I pray we'd have some laughs over this weekend. I pray we'd have some fun. But Lord, I also pray we'd have some moments of real connection with you and real encounter with you. There may be. No, there will be. There are many of us who are exhausted, maybe physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, maybe all of the above. And yet there's a deep desire in all of us to keep up the pursuit. What are we to do when the ball comes to us? We're going to catch it and we're going to run with it. And Lord Jesus, I pray that you will help us, teach us, lead us, encounter us, touch us, change us. By the power of your spirit over this weekend, 